I'm on the hunt for a DAW that works for me. I've used Pro Tools for going on about 20 years. Holy cow, I feel old. Yeah, my shirt's wet. I just realized before filming, I had my kids toothpaste all over my shirt. What are you gonna do? But things I've recently gone through here at my commercial studio have made me wanna take a look at my DAW situation a little closer. I've used other DAWs very, very seldomly in situations like pre-production or where I just can't take my entire rig with me because it's a big old rig. I'm running Pro Tools HD with HDX cards, Burl converters, and Pro Tools had just suited that workflow. I've started dipping my toes into a few different DAWs and I've been really excited about the features that I just didn't know were out there because I've been in the Pro Tools world for so long. Right now, I'm trying the one I've honestly been the most frightened to try, Reaper. This is a DAW that has a cult-like following and I don't mean that negatively. Any video about any DAW, there's a whole long list of things that say Reaper, you guys make it known that you use it and you love it. And I've been in it for a little bit today with a lot of help from Mike from Let's Talk About Reaper. Hey, it's Mike, let's talk about Reaper. Go subscribe to his channel. That dude is a wealth of knowledge when it comes to stuff like this. And he actually helped me get up and running. A couple things before I jump in, I wanna take files that I have already recorded in Pro Tools for another session. I wanna see how quickly I can kind of get acquainted. I did poke around and make sure things were working before I did this because some of the things in Reaper are so vastly different than what I know in Pro Tools. So I wanted to make sure I knew how to get things up and running. I am not a professional when it comes to Reaper. There will be cringy moments, just like my Studio One video, where people who really know the program are gonna wish they were over my shoulder and you're gonna be shouting at the screen, put them in the comments. I want to learn this stuff. And these videos are specifically for how easy is it to navigate knowing one DAW really, really well. For me, it's Pro Tools. For you, it could be something else. How quickly can we get up with a basic understanding of what a DAW is and how a DAW works to go to Reaper, Logic, Studio One, Mixbus, I want to try them all. I'm on a mission to see what's out there because even in the few I have tried, there's a whole world of possibilities out there for many different workflows. Real quick guys, I need to say thank you to today's sponsor, Sweetwater. I'm always really excited when Sweetwater sponsors these videos because they are truly a company that I use a lot in purchasing stuff for the recording studio as well as music gear. Yeah, I'm a musician besides doing this recording studio thing and making these videos. And being a guitar player, bass player, I have always had really, really nice instruments, but I've used whatever guitar strap people leave around the studio. And no, I'm not kidding. I don't think I've ever purchased a guitar strap. I've literally never put thought into a guitar strap until they start doing this and then they start falling off your guitars and if you're like me, I'm not gonna put strap locks on. I don't wanna do that. How about with these crazy nice instruments, you buy yourself a crazy nice strap. Levi's makes handmade leather guitar straps. A nice strap is not something I have ever had in my entire life. Good Lord, is it comfortable. And now that I have a full leather strap, I can finally do what I've always wanted to do. Full leather stage wardrobe. Never been more comfortable in my entire life. If you're interested, links to the strap, which is honestly super comfortable, down in the description below, as well as links to all the gear that I use here in the studio. So if you're curious about that, check it out. If you decide to make a purchase, it does support the channel in more ways than you can imagine. Thank you, Sweetwater, for sponsoring. Now back to the video. So without further ado, Let's jump into Reaper. So here's what I'm gonna do. Let's open up my files. So importing them doesn't put it at the beginning, but I can do that. I'm sure this is gonna be definitely a situation where people are gonna watch this and be embarrassed for how bad I'm doing. One thing I was told was right click everything. So I'm gonna try to get in that mindset because that is not how Pro Tools works. Insert new tracks. Separate tracks. There we go. And then I need to bring in some MIDI. Uh, import MIDI tempo map. Hey. Oh, I can import project markers. 
Oh, yes. What happened here? Can I have it do it at the beginning of the song? Yes, got it. Okay, figuring out the quirks. I'm gonna get this, gonna get this. Okay. Yes! And it brings everything in. Oh, I love it. I have all of my markers and all the MIDI information from Pro Tools right here. Heck yeah. Okay, we're not hearing anything. Oh, what's going on here? Does it just start to stack the mixer? What is this? I don't want that. Why would you do that? So right off the bat, I need to set up some outputs here. Why does it, if it's doing this always on top thing, I'm not sure I dig. So let's get rid of this. Okay, there it is. I'm sure there's a way around that. I haven't figured it out yet. Or it'll hide everything behind the mix window. And that's kind of annoying. Maybe it has to be always on top. Okay, why? Here we go. I don't know why that's happening, but all of my right clicks are behind what I need. Oh, I can kind of see it here. Okay, here we go. Let's make this work. Hey, we have output. Okay, here we go. See if I can get Mike on Discord and ask him what's going on real fast. Why would my right click keep going behind the mixer window? Mike is walking me through this right now. He's honestly been a godsend in helping me get up and going. And he's told me about all these different things that you can do with Reaper that are frankly over my head right now. Uh, I said, I think that may have been a bug reported. I know there's a hot fix in the pipe for that. Let me see if that was one of the issues. You're the man. Let's just open Reaper and hope it doesn't happen again. In my testing on the first time I did this, it wasn't doing that. I will need to set up a few things on my master just to make sure SonarWorks reference. Let's add loudness because I know that's a plugin in here. Sweet. That'll just be there when I need it with source elements, source nexus. And that is going to make sure this goes to OBS. I hear sonar works, you guys don't. It's doing room correction. You don't need that. I'm gonna send. What did I do? Uh, honestly having some issues and I think it's because of the way I'm importing the MIDI. So I'm gonna be a little more careful. So I have the playhead at the beginning, dragging these in, separate tracks. Perfect. That's exactly what I want. I would like Pro Q. Not sure if there's a difference between choosing the AU or VST. I come from the world of AAX where I've never had an option, so I hope that's not an issue. <laughs> so here's the issue I had last time I did this. The session is set up at 120. It was recorded at 100. Let's try this. I change the BPMs right now to 100. I don't want that to change. I'm trying to see if I can find if it's gonna pitch or stretch if I change the tempo and I don't want that to happen. I'm sure there's a way to do this before you ever get started. It's a way for Mike to save me from this one. The issue I'm having is as soon as I import MIDI, that MIDI needs to be imported at the right tempo, but it'll change the tempo and the current tracks I have are stretching to that tempo. I don't want that to happen. So if I can keep those, everything should line up. Mike is typing. Go follow this guy. He knows his stuff when it comes to Reaper. I've gotten countless screen grabs from this guy to explain me a total noob here. This can be changed on a per item basis, but you can also set it as your preferred default. That's what I want. Honestly, these little things are why I was nervous about Reaper in the beginning, but having somebody help me like this, I can see why Reaper is very cool because it will do whatever you want it to do. Reaper will do whatever you want it to do, but it's kind of hard to just jump in and know what's happening. But I can see, even from my own learning in Pro Tools, if I were to know everything this thing can do, which seems unbelievably powerful, unbelievably programmable. I mean, the sky's the limit with what you can imagine and what you want a session to do. It's just, there's a balance between being that powerful and being user-friendly. And I think that was what makes me nervous about trying Reaper. File, project settings, and change the time-based items or envelope markers to time. Time. Okay, now I'm gonna try to import this MIDI again. 
And let's hope Mike came through for me here. So if I do this, they shouldn't stretch. That looks good. Oh, yes. Comforts me. This is gonna be good. Okay, insert a virtual instrument. Somehow I lost the playback engine when I added contact and I think I may have crashed Reaper. Stretch this bad boy out. Heavens, that stinks. Why is it going behind it? I'm just gonna get organized real fast. All these drums are gonna go into this guy for a folder. That's cool. I love that you could just do that. So, a new track is Command T. Boom. Not where I wanted that to go. Uh, I've kind of forgotten how these are set up, so I'm assuming. Oh, that's volume, not pan. <laughs> oh dear. So, where's pan? Do I just not see it? There it is. Okay, I got you. And I can make those smaller. That's dope. So I need to go back to the mixer here. That is kind of annoying. It just pops. Okay, I need to work on these guitars. Because these need Miko. Because we recorded this one without knowing what we were going to be doing matching the other guitar, so we just went with right into a load box so that I could upload something like a Vintage 30. And I would like a chorus. Oh, heck yeah, everything's pure. One thing I do notice is plugins just start to stack up and stay there. I can see myself not doing because in Pro Tools you move on to a different plugin and the previous one closes. I'm sure there's a script for that. I just don't know it yet. But once I'm in here and working, this is fast and bussing is awesome. So if I create a new, add a new send, add sends to all tracks, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do hardware. I think I just want to make a new track and put it at the end of my drums. I want Valhalla. So there's interesting ways to think about this. I'm having to think about a session just slightly differently. So I don't know why. When I have my insert active, it's like stuttering and stopping. It, it just sounds... Without it, we're fine. It's such an interesting little quirk. And I've detected the latency. It's coming back the same every time. I set it to zero, does it matter? Because it's on the mix bus. Is the buffer just not high enough? I guess I don't know, 1024, 2048? I don't know. That's not doing anything. I wonder if it's just a weird thing with the chain going on. So let's just continue. Okay, this is...
killing me. I gotta figure this out. Big issue with cracks, okay. I mean, what I don't understand is my CPU or my memory are not hardly being touched, which is good, but it seems like there's something keeping this from working, and I don't know why. It's probably some stupid fix. Can I set it to 64? Ping detect this. That's what's interesting is if I, even if I pull the mix back, it it goes away. So I think it's in how it's lining up. Ah, oh, that's a big old bummer. Replace it with just like a Rea EQ. Nope, that didn't do it. Okay. Yes, I still have metric halo. Heck. I really like how quick you can move around. If all I want to do is create a new track, let's put like a, can I just type delay? Will it bring up all my delays? Sweet. Heck yeah, replica. And I just want to pull that. Delay. Verb. Oh, I hate that that's always on top. Yeah, I'm keeping all these open. That's pro. Cool. Oh, this is moving quick now. Okay, so sax, how easy is it to just drag those? If I want, I should just be able to do this, right? So definitely a few roadblocks here with Reaper. Uh, I need to figure out the insert and what's happening there because that's keeping me from using my outboard gear, which is part of what I want. Uh, I'm not sure if it's just a specific bug with what I'm doing here, but man, once you get up and running, 
with Reaper. This is cool. The way sends work and dragging and dropping and right clicking everything. I, I know I have just barely scratched the surface with what is here, um, but I really, really like this. You can move so fast. <laughs> if I missed huge things, please let me know. This is my first real stab at using Reaper. Uh, I gotta say, I liked it a lot. I could see this being incorporated in my workflow. I have, I definitely have some things to learn. Uh, I need to figure out some under the hood things going on, but right off the bat, I love what I see. If you guys like this and you appreciate what I'm trying to do here in finding things of value in just about every doll that I can try uh, or get my hands on, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you wanna see me do more with other dolls like this. I already did Studio One. Uh, there is, this is my first one with Reaper. I'm sure there's gonna be more. I need to learn how to edit in here. That would be really cool and how to incorporate outboard gear on a more dependable level. I'm Resident Loser Jeremy. I'll see you in the next one.